Welcome to the 28storms.com tropical weather update for Tuesday, June 28th. The only game in town remains to be the tropical wave that is now in the lower half of the Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche. This is the same wave we've been tracking across the Caribbean for much of the past week. It is now located in this region, and as of the latest tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, they think the system has about a 70% chance of becoming a classified tropical cyclone within the next 48 hours. Also, we have a Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance aircraft investigating the system as I speak to see if this system has already attained tropical depression status. So it looks like this system can be classified as a tropical depression at any time now. If you were viewing yesterday, you can see that the low-level vorticity has increased significantly in just the last 24 hours, which is a sign that this system is really getting its act together. We can also see this using precipitable water analysis. Not only is this an indication with all of these darker colors that a lot of moisture is becoming more abundant in the lower half of the Gulf, but we see toward the end of the animation that the cyclonic spin really begins to ramp upward. A mid-morning microwave satellite pass revealed that we still do not have a well-defined surface circulation, but as we can see, it's more than likely just a matter of time and perhaps just hours away from occurring. Looking at the most recent zoomed-in visible satellite animation, along with some of the more recent Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance observations, it looks as though the primary low-level circulation is beginning to develop near 20 degrees north and 93 degrees west. And as you can see, the low-level circulation is not completely clouded underneath the convection just yet. It is a bit exposed with some of the more intense convection just to the east of the center, but we are seeing a gradual increase in organization hour by hour, and I think that we will get a tropical depression, if not by the 4 p.m. Central Time Hurricane Center package, then perhaps by later tonight or early tomorrow morning at the latest based on the current trends. Here's a bit of a less zoomed in visible so you can see overall what's occurring. And if you remember yesterday, the primary low level circulation was located over land around here. And over the last 24 hours, it's really refocused itself a bit more toward the northwest, as many of the model members had indicated. And now upper level conditions are becoming more favorable. And that's the reason why we're seeing a bit more of an organized tropical system. And if we take a look at the latest water vapor image, you can see that there's no lack of moisture. If there's any dry air, it's well off toward the northwest. And as long as the wind shear remains light, and it looks like it will continue to be light, in fact, the upper level winds are expected to diminish further over the next 48 hours, I really don't see that this dry air will become much of a problem. As we can see by these darker blue colors, the wind shear is beginning to decrease over the Bay of Campeche, as indicated by all of the model guidance. And we can see that upper level ridge now beginning to develop over much of the area as a bigger long wave trough begins to dip down over much of the central and eastern Caribbean, which will also give way for more upper level ridging out toward the west over much of the western Gulf of Mexico. So just to sum things up, we have favorable water temperatures, obviously. We have favorable upper level winds, and we already have an organizing surface flow over the open waters. This is the perfect recipe for tropical cyclogenesis and not only that but we also have the support from a lot of model guidance. Here's the latest 12Z ECMWF forecast. This model has obviously had the best grip on this tropical system. It correctly defines the low at 1006 millibars at the current time frame and then in 24 hours it continues to deepen this system. This, is already, ha this already has the looks of a well-defined tropical storm and then, believe it or not, by 48 hours, the model deepens the low down to 998 millibars, which is almost what you would expect for a borderline Category 1 hurricane. So obviously, the model is, ex is expecting at least a strong tropical storm, Arlene, to make landfall just north of Tampico, Mexico. Overall, I agree with this model forecast. It now looks like we will have a strong tropical storm making landfall to the north of Tampico sometime around Wednesday evening or Wednesday night. I don't think that the uh, storm will particularly develop as aggressively as the European model is showing, but at this point I would not be completely shocked if we got a moderate to strong tropical storm out of this. Perhaps 40 to 50 knots in, in intensity would be the most realistic at this time. As to be expected, the 12Z Canadian is not overly afraid to strengthen the system further either. This is now 24 hours out. As we can see, this is m more than a well-defined tropical storm and by 36 to 42 hours it's making a landfall as Tropical Storm Arlene near Tampico, Mexico. The most recent runs of the 12Z GFS do look a little suspect as you can see toward the toward the landfall of this system it begins to take it more toward the southwest and I think overall the GFS is still struggling to 
define the monsoonal circulation and it, it's really having a hard time forecasting exactly the, the path of the storm as long as it remains embedded in the more of a monsoon type situation compared to what we normally see with tropical cyclones out here in the Atlantic. That being said, the GFS along with the other dynamical model members are all in agreement that we will still continue to see favorable upper level ridging aloft throughout the duration of this storm over the open waters. Here's the latest spaghetti model plot and again I think much of the models are still having a hard time resolving exactly where this tropical cyclone is going to go as it originated from being part of more of the monsoonal type of circulation down here over Central America and I think the more, much more reasonable and believable scenario is the 12Z ECMWF with a landfall a bit north of this model consensus and I have a strong feeling that that is what the National Hurricane Center will closely follow when they have to put out their first official forecast track. Also really quickly after this storm begins to exit the region and dissipate over Mexico I don't think we'll be done with the tropics for too long because we still have a favorable upward pulse of the Madden Julian oscillation that is expected to remain over the western half of the Atlantic Basin for the next 10 days and the European is keeping lo uh, surface pressures rather low once again across much of the Yucatan Peninsula this is the day 7 forecast there's nothing that stands out too much here but there is a broad 1009 millibar area of low pressure and by day 8 it's actually taking a very weak surface low toward the north central Gulf Coast certainly not indicative of any type of tropical storm development or anything of the of the sort but overall this is telling me that the western Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico will continue to be the areas to watch and that's really no surprise for this time of the year and this part of the climatological hurricane season so just to sum things up, we do expect 95L Invest to become Tropical Depression 1, the first depression of the 2011 hurricane season, within the next 12 or so hours. And thereafter, this system should have no trouble organizing into Tropical Storm Arlene before it makes a landfall somewhere near or just to the north of Tampico, Mexico, by Wednesday evening or Wednesday night. The main effects will be heavy rainfall. As of right now, it looks like the primary uh, rainfall estimates will be to the south of Lower Texas, although I will not rule out two to three inches of rainfall for Brownsville and surrounding locations. And thereafter, it doesn't look like anything else is imminent out there in the Atlantic or Eastern Pacific, but the Gulf and Caribbean will be the two areas that will be continue to be monitored for tropical development. So that's your update for now. We're going to go ahead and upload another video shortly after this system becomes upgraded and uh, that will still be the case even if it's upgraded late tonight or early tomorrow morning. So thanks again for checking out 28storms.com and check back soon.